and Pacific Islander Heritage Month uh, special program sponsored by the Diker Library. Thank you very much, Ali, again, for using the donors, individual donors fund to support this program, to make it available for to all the participants worldwide. Thank you also for contributing members of the classroom um, to donate to the Pedagogy Library towards additional programs uh, by our uh, instructor, Henry Lee. I will plan to, to organize a new series later this year when we know how much uh, the donation can be pulled together. I really appreciate everybody's effort and thank you, for, thank you very much on behalf of uh, the library and the communities we serve. Thank you. So it's one o'clock and uh, Henry, uh, that's all yours. Thank you, Yongle, for your wonderful... Henry, you are muted. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. Yeah. Thank, thank everybody for your support of this uh, series, um, both series, the Memories of Home and the Heritage, uh, Asian Heritage Brush Painting series. So this uh, will be our last class. Um, I truly appreciate all the support um, and uh, hard work from Yong Le and uh, her colleagues in the Brooklyn Libraries. Um, it's my honor to continue uh, in the future. Thank for all the donors' uh, support. Uh, we'll be back in, in August, I believe, <laughs> or uh, later this year. Okay, um, today we'll, we'll focus on um, Lotus painting. Uh, let me show you a picture here. Um, okay, this is a bold uh, miniature lotus. Uh, you can see we have a, a seven day old seed uh, sprouting from the uh, eight or seven years old seed actually. Um, Victoria, my wife, bought from Amazon. So if you search lotus seeds, you can buy them online. Uh, and if you, you know, start to grow them, uh, I think there's there are diff different kinds. Some grow in, in larger jars, some in the pond, some uh, in, in a uh, size like a... a, a uh, yeah, this is the large lotus. Uh, I think you already see this picture in the handout. It's taken by my bro brother. Uh, but I think this could be uh, in the pot, in the large, um, because it's against the a wall, not like uh, in, the, in the lake. It could be large. So this is the natural size. Oh, yeah, this is the one I just found. Yeah, sorry. I tried to, to find another picture. Anyway, it, it's, uh, it's a uh, very small size, just like uh, yeah, not like this picture. It's probably like a, you know the dining uh, bowl, <laughs> uh, a little larger than this could be. And they grow from mud. You know, you just uh, Victoria just uh, prepared them. I saw. Uh, it has to be raw soil without uh, any uh, any uh, leaves or you know um, organic uh, components. It's just that they're raw, so they grow from uh, the the mud. But they're so um, just like uh, Yong Le put in her wonderful introduction to lotus, uh, both botanically and uh, culturally uh, backgrounds. So you can read that. I will not repeat here. Um, let me let me go to some uh, uh, of my teacher's paintings. Uh, this painting I I received as a, a teaching sample. I forgot to bring it. I do have this original, but I think it, you can see clearly uh, with the picture. 
It's a uh, lotus with a dragonfly. That's the theme we're going to do. Uh, here's the book by Master Zhang Zhenying, my teacher. Um, he does wonderful lotus. And we learned uh, wisteria before. Okay, here is the lotus, I think, page two. Yeah, that, that that's that's the color color version. Uh, you know, like a, a colorful lotus we will learn later today. Traditionally, we can also do it uh, with uh, ink only, just like you see here in the picture. There is another kind of lotus uh, called uh, water lily. In Chinese, it's the sleeping lily because they close uh, at dawn and are open at uh, morning uh, when when sun rise. So the, uh, it's known as a shui lian, but in English, it's a sleeping. I mean, uh, water water lily. The difference is the water lily doesn't have the long stem. They they barely above the water and it's much smaller uh, size. Uh, the leaves, especially. Okay. We we have the handouts, I think, somewhere. Oh, I mentioned this uh, master, uh, Ba Da Shan Ren, in my handout uh, uh, email. This was this is a collection of uh, um, Freer Gallery, a museum, Asian Museum in DC. I haven't been there, but they have the largest collection of Palasan paintings, including this, this angry duck uh, with lotus. And uh, there's a video on YouTube talking about this. And you know, there's uh, uh, a lot to, to learn from that, uh, from this uh, artist. The composition, uh, the emptiness uh, of a negative space unpainted space in Chinese painting and the, the brushwork you know the, the um, you can see the long stand this, this is a large scroll so we're, we're not going to paint uh, we challenge us to do this kind of stroke it's, it's extremely difficult uh, Zhang Na Qian another a contemporary artist who learned from Bala Shan he can do like a two meters long line without a break <coughs> Um, here, here are some samples of my uh, composition study of the uh, lotus. Uh, let me see. Oops. Okay, this is a a, a painting uh, I, uh, collected by a, a uh, artist in San Diego, a teacher in San Diego. Um, I did it uh, with uh, a group there. Um, it's a col colored version of uh, my teacher's uh, style of painting. And the flower is uh, done uh, without the outline. You can also outline it like this. This is my teacher's painting with a dragonfly and a fan, fan face shape. And this is another uh, <coughs> example of uh, my teacher's work with a uh, water lily. So there's not a long stem. And the three dragonflies. Uh, you can take a closer look of how this was done. Uh, it requires very sensitive outline of the wings to indicate the semi-translucent, uh, transparent, uh, translucent uh, feature. Very uh, dry and uh, thin lines with uh, some, uh, you know, there are some part with bone kind of straight line, some very soft edges. Okay, that's uh, dragonfly. And you can see how this was drawn. We can practice this before we do the color version. So uh, the nail head start start of a stroke in, at the 
uh, top. So two strokes per pedal. Right. This this is similar to Lotus, but uh, uh, yeah, the Lotus flower is a different uh, uh, form or shape as a uh, uh, compared to rose and the peony, which is a, uh, like a, a, a ball, uh, a sphere kind of uh, uh, form. Um, this is more like a ball shape, I think. Um, this is white, white uh, lotus with a background wash. Black and white version. It's outlined leaves, uh, water lily. Now you can see the difference, right? There's a little dragonfly. Uh, it's a, I, I don't think they will grow up. It's just a small dragonfly. We'll, we'll, it's uh, much easier than the larger one, so we'll probably do that. This is a kingfisher with a water lily. Oh, this is the one I'm going to do first, okay? And uh, when we do water lily, we start from the leaf because that stage uh, provides the stage for the flower. Okay, uh, you can use the uh, unsized paper. I, I got a, a small piece of uh, double shrine. I'm going to try this. Double shrine is uh, thicker than single shrine um, or raw shrine, unsized absorbent paper. And uh, I'll use some ink to start with, and then we'll use uh, rouge. Uh, probably he used carmine, because the title says that the the, the um, lotus petal appears uh, fresher or uh, with uh, uh, the sunset or sun sunrise, you know. With an extra dye of a sunrise, something like that. Okay, so uh, I got some uh, rouge here. I got. I may need some uh, carmine. Well, let me just get some here. So rouge and carmine combined to get a. Let me just use a cleaner. You can use uh, water to dilute it. Um, yeah, there's no white in this case. I think it's easier. If you use white, uh, you have to use the proper um, uh, solution or um, then, uh, thickness. You have to dilute it, dilute it with uh, water. The white has to be diluted. Okay, with, with, we don't do the flowers yet. Okay, um, the leaves, we use a large brush. You can use this uh, large size, uh, soft brush. You can take that uh, string off. We did uh, in the first class, remember, that you can, you can bind uh, the bottom of the large brush to make it uh, more, uh, more pointed. Are smaller, but uh, for lotus we need uh, the four lengths of that. Okay, so I just uh, free this and uh, let me put this away. You can use a larger saucer, but I just use this one so you can see. Get some water there to get. Uh, first of all, I need a light. Light ink, so I let me get a dog first. Grind my ink. At this time, you can look at the sample painting and think about the composition, uh, especially where the the um, branches or the stems start. Uh, in this case, there are multiple starting points. Uh, in the bottom, and try to avoid the center. That's why Teacher Zhang didn't really paint that flower stem. Uh, 
right in the middle. It could be more to the left, I think. So this leaf is on the on the right. Because they grow from water, emerge from water. So you you don't have to uh, indicate all the starting points. Some sometimes um, vary a little bit because the root is under water. So we we don't really have a um, a center for all the stems visible in this case. Okay. But uh, just remember where you start the the, the um, branch or stem of a flower is very important to avoid the corners and the centers. It's a very common mistake that um, all, all of us will make in the beginning. You know, you will start right in the middle or right on the corner. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to use a uh, lot, lot of water to dilute some, some ink. And you can see the, the bottom of the brush is uh, still water. Um, I still see some uh, greens there, so let me, let me redo this. Okay, you can clean the, let's clean the brush. And then I got some uh, leftover uh, indigo here, so I just use that. Um, you don't have to use yellow because this is a uh, grown leaf. For, for tender leaves, we will use some, uh, some uh, yellow to get a tender green. So in, in this case, I think we just use uh, a little indigo little indigo, just a hint of it, and then light ink. Okay, then, so it's um, variegated. There are clean water, indigo, and the light ink, and finally some dark without blending, just the one touch of it. And you see where the dark is? Um, that could be added on the top, and that's the second. But uh, let me start from the. You can start from the, you know, one, um, either the the bottom, the lower lower half or the upper half. I think he probably starts right in the near the middle here. So you just have an imaginative the center of the. Uh, the end of the leaf, the white part is the back side of the leaf. Okay, we, we're doing the inner part or the upper side in, in ink. Okay, so here we go. It's a triangle, I mean, it, it's leaned to the, to the left, right? So I hold the brush at the slant position, not straight like this. So the dark is on one side. You could hold, hold it a little straight, I think. Um, I try to figure out, because at this point you can read the sample painting to see if it's done uh, from in, inside out or outside in. I think both ways. It looks like the dark was added, so uh, you can have a turn back, you know, if one stroke is not, not enough, you can have a partial, you, you know, like a U-turn, a partial repeat. Uh, just. Uh, remember the continuity is very important between strokes. Even you reload in, in between the process, uh, the chi, the movement, uh, should continue. Okay, so let's do it. So I'll do this uh, lower pedal that's, that goes all the way from uh, uh, here to here. Uh, if you are a beginner, you know, you can, you can draw uh, the shape of the stroke with the charcoal. Uh, actually, the master also do that, like Qi Bai Shi, the great uh, freestyle master. He would draw an outline sketch when he um, see a masterpiece, because those days there's no uh, photograph, like a digital photography. So he would he will make a note with the outline of the strokes. You don't have to paint the, sh the values. 
you, you, you need to draw the shape of the stroke. So there will be three strokes in this area. I'm doing, okay, so just, okay, this is too dark. It's okay. So I don't reload, I just exhaust it. See, this, this paper is a double shrine. It takes lots of the water. That's why I normally don't use it. Um, let me load 40. And now I know the paper a little better. better. I know how much it, it takes to paint. So let me. Then, then I proceed to the other side. I think um, you can do from uh, like a. To make it a natural um, transition, you might start from the other side. So the, in this area, it's, uh, it's uh, softer. The middle is softer. OK, so I just have a little dark. And uh, just combine them. And you can, you can use the bottom if you want to get uh, a very soft edge. You know. You can use the bottom of the brush. See the brush bands? So I can use the bottom. If I use the tip, it will show some dry, dryness like, like this. You know. If you need, you can, you can have that to indicate some vein or, or um, old leaf edge, you know, like a wizard. OK. <clears throat> and then you can change brush or uh, just use the dry brush, you know, you can dry it further with the paper towel uh, to do the, the lower part. Uh, usually for beginners, I would suggest to use a stiffer brush to do the, the stamp. So uh, you can change the brush, okay? You can change the brush to a stiff one, which is brown, usually. This is much easier to draw lines, we call that liner. This is a washer. Uh, what I call this uh, wash brush. Okay, so wet the brush first, then you can shape it whichever you want. If you don't wet the brush, it will not point or it will not uh, flat. If you want it flat, you can squeeze it. If you want pointed, you can make it pointed. That's how flexible it is. Um, okay, I see there's it's a dry brush stroke for the stem. So you can draw the stem first, but then you draw the veins connect to the leaf. OK. So let's do, um, I'll just use a little ink here so you can see. Is this too dark? Just to redo it. I can have some uh, blue. OK. And you can test, you can test with a paper towel or uh, you should use a scrap paper here. Just uh, some west painting, uh, yeah, just to test it. Okay. So avoid the this uh, dead corner of our. So it's about like one inch from the, the leaf right here that make a very swift uh, stroke. You cannot hesitate. And you can blot it before it smear. So that's very important. Just take this piece on your left hand. And once you, once you finish, just blot the wet part or the whole, you know, just set it. That's, that's the um, move. You can only see on video, not in the books. They, they cannot show you all this. Uh, yeah. Okay. You don't have to make. You don't have. Don't have to make it symmetrical. So one side is longer, and then you know, other side it's a uh, little. So don't make it symmetrical. To vary the the. Uh, uh, yeah. See, this is not uh, perfectly equal. So. If you put something symmetrical, it will be not so nice. So this could be a little longer. I think it must also could change a little bit. Something like that. You can make it softer. OK. But don't change too much, because you, you will break the continuity. 
once you start to do that, it will lose uh, continuity. OK. Uh, now I will do the stem for the flower. Then we'll add flowers on top of that. OK. So another stroke. You have to control exactly. You can test it on the same kind of paper so you will know if it's smear or not smear. OK. And uh, just a little more. A gray. Also, you can you can see how I load. Huh? Okay. And uh, estimate where the flower, the size of the flower. So you need to paint uh, not too high. If you do it too high, you don't have room. Then you have to paint a li really miniature flower. Actually, the miniature lotus have a quite large flower, and then you, you see the seed of this miniature. But it's a pretty large, but they swan, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they um, grow <laughs> when they wet. Actually, it's pretty large compared to the, uh, the plant size. Okay, so this is a golden spot, right? It's like a one third from top right here. And. Uh, Henry? Yeah. Sorry, could you minimize the size of your the reference uh, screen okay. so we could see the larger? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now you can see. Of course. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think it's more important to vary the angle also. See this? Uh, in the in the handout, it's a little uh, more slant to than the this one is a little more more straight uh, straighter, right? So that that could be uh, good. Uh, and there's a slight turn towards the the uh, it's like a tai chi, you know, it's very subtle. Um, turn back to the right left. It, the tendency is goes to the left. I turn turn um, towards the right. So there's slight, just a slight hint of the net. Okay. And you don't have to do the lower part. I just uh, omit that. Okay. You can do another baby one, but this could be um, optional. I think it's good to add. Could and you move the paper slightly to your right, right. please? So we could see the yeah, little Let me just box. move my ink away. So you Thank you. See this. Any more? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So this part is the, it's quite low, almost, almost uh, outside the, the frame. Yeah. So it's just a baby, baby one. OK, so now we have uh, two uh, stems for the lotus and the, the butt. Right. You can use the same brush, or you can change uh, to another one when you change color. We may use the ink brush for the, um, the reeds, the grass, not bamboo in this case. You know, look like bamboo, same technique, but the reeds. OK, so I'll use uh, another uh, Stiff brush, which is the, the basic stiff brush you got from the library if you are um, in the first session. Okay, we're going to make a little, um, I'll just use Rouge. Rouge is number 400 and uh, Comma is a number 390. So I use root to outline, and then we use comma to do the, the wash. I think you don't have to uh, vary the, the uh, intensity um, that much. But you can see the, the, the tip of the petals are more intense. That's because the line is thicker too, and the you know, more pressure, and the slower. So you, you know, it, even you have the same uh, color in the brush, it can vary. 
in terms of uh, solid and uh, void, or soft and hard, you know, dark and light. Uh, you know. So it has to do with uh, some factors like uh, how you uh, do it. If you uh, let the brush go slow, it will be um, more darker, more darker, yeah. OK. Henry, there's a question yeah. concerning why the left hand stem does not go all the way down to the bottom. Why oh, does it end I slightly about above this, the uh, leaf? Um, yeah, I think in the in the handout, um, I I don't have it because I'm not uh, Master John. Um, he might consider it, uh, um it has to do with the continuity of the the qi. So if you start f an another, um, usually there's only one main in in entrance of the qi of the uh, movement. So that's on the right. If you if you have two, uh, especially this one has to do with the main uh, focal point or main uh, focus focus of the painting. So you need to make that as a host, right? So uh, I think his thinking might be just uh, consider this uh, leaf and the uh, branch, uh, the, this leaf and the stem is on the, in the same uh, kind of movement, continuous movement. If you have that uh, extension, uh, it's, it's more true. It could be true, you know, I, I can also, you know, I, like I ex explained already, if you, if you, uh, in a real situation, the surface of water could hide the lower part of that stem. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah I think that's, that's a perfect the, explanation. That's, that's, a, that's a better yeah. explanation. Uh, that's a logic, um, a, a scientific explanation. Artistically, I think if you have second entrance from uh, uh, the uh, left, it will compete with, with the, the, the leaf. leaf. Thank you know, you, you, you will have, have two entries. You, you know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, the small, small one doesn't doesn't touch the, the frame. frame. Also, also, you know, the same for the same token. token. It's, it's, it's above the water, water. so, so it, it just paints the water. water. We, we don't paint the background water, water but uh, all, all this is a hint of the substance of water. So we call the void. In Chinese, Chinese painting, um, uh, pregnant, pregnant void, which, which has, uh, you, you, you know, know, you have, have to indicate the, um, uh, it's, it's water or air, or qi, you know. So, so it's, it's a, it's a field with, with uh, something. So that's, that's one of the um, ways to, to do that. that. So, so, you know, know when, when we paint, paint a night, night, vi night view, view, we, we don't, don't have to paint the dark, dark right? It's, it's indicated with uh, some hint of, uh, you know, things like this. So, so I'm going to do the center one, which is, uh, we'll will set the, the uh, size for others, the uh, reference for others. So, so you need to, to be careful. If it's too small, you cannot enlarge it. If it's too big, then you might, might have trouble. trouble. So, so let me just do. Uh, uh, and again, it's not symmetrical. So one side is a little bit shorter, and then one side is a little larger. I just realized my my color is not beyond home. <laughs> it's just not that vibrant. It's a little dark. That's the, that's the rouge. So the rouge could be added. I think uh, as a touch up. As, as a uh, accent touch, later. so we, I, I have changed that. I, I, I use more carmine to start, start with. Then, then we we'll use rouge to dot, to, to accent the dot top, top, I think. And, and we, we can just do the the outer one to set all the petals before we do the uh, veins on the on those leaves, I think. So, so you, you can consider, consider this. Uh, it's finished. You know, also, you can omit it. Henry, design. could you move the paper to the right again, please? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you. I think it's, it's on the, the it's, it's on the video. video. You, you see, almost dark, like, like a ink, right? 
this, this is, is rouge, rouge too, too dark. dark. So, so let, let me make sure, sure it's light. It's okay. okay. All right. So, so left and the right. right. See, we we, we usually, usually do um, by like, like a, a yeah, balance. balance. So, so if, if I, I do this side. Like, like this, this I, I'll, I'll, I'll do, do the left and right, right side immediately to balance that. Yes. And, and I know it's it's not a equivalent, you know. It, I mean, it's not it's not symmetrical. It's a um, it's balanced. Okay, and uh, this one, and this is short, small, and then this is dot large. Reverse. Okay, how large it depends on uh, the others. And this is probably the largest value here. So I'm going to do a really tall and large. Yeah, yeah you, it's, it's very challenging that, that you cannot uh, go slow because the brush is too wet. So I'll, I'll try the brush, brush like this so I can go slower. All right. And, and this, this one is right above this, so I, I probably. I can vary a little bit somehow, but it doesn't matter as long as the size is some, you know, you don't, you don't want to repeat exactly here. So I just make this a little bit like that, and then you, you don't have, have to count the pairs anymore, it's just uh, filling the, the blanks here. Okay, <coughs> just yeah, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I, I vary a little bit. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter, you know. You can, yeah, you can finish by adding these things because this brush is uh, is suitable for this. So I just continue with that. Um, so it's because it's light. I don't have to wash it to do the dark, uh, maybe a darker lines in the in the front. So I just follow this. See, See the, the void um, in the bottom. bottom. It's it, it lift the, gra the, the gradually the brush and uh, uh, with, with the fast li lifting and in, in the end. So, so it, it creates a great like, like a solid to void transition. transition. And, and the, the, I, I see there's the, a. Um, Central one. It, it could be inside and outside, but in this style, we call it a small three style. We do not distinguish inner and outer uh, side of the pedal. And in Gongbi style, elaborated style, it will you will make that distinction. So you you will see inside darker light light uh, outside uh, kind of uh, okay. I'll add a little more color here. Okay, just the um, radius, not expand kind of a little bit from the tip. So they're not perfectly parallel. And I know there's the two kind of it just a center went, went in from there, there you kind of uh, some curved like that. Okay, whatever. I'll touch the tip with a little dark just to enhance that just add one or two dots to the nail head part, you know, that could be added. So we really don't need to Double load. We, we can, can just ascent. Okay, here I missed one pedal, but, but that's good. You remember, remember my steps, steps right? So, so let me do, do this again. again. Here, so, so I, I use, use the, the same color to a little, a little lighter, lighter softer to draw the inner veins. They, they actually look, look pretty close. close. You, you you could have done this um, with the outer outline. At the, the one step, step but uh, I, I just, just want to concentrate on the whole shape before before I go to details. 
decorative details. These are optional, actually. Right? Okay, and then I, I dot the tip with a little dark rouge, just kind of, not exactly repeat, just accent, 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 the tip, and create some, uh, yeah. Um, there are some uh, details like the the hair or thorn, not really thorns. <laughs> it should be dotted before it gets completely dry. I forgot that. Let's do that. And the uh, notice the rhythm. So. The, the same size, you don't vary the size, but the uh, density and sparsity and, you know, the distance between them. Okay. So, so they don't go like a, uh, equal. So you can do both sides and also center. And there's some more in the beginning, uh, on top here. And, uh, yeah, some could be uh, outside the line. It you know, to modify the feel of the, to make it more even. That's uh, uh, just the feel of it, okay. And I see there's some, maybe I got too much space, but I use the uh, color to fill in the, the, the wash. Okay, let me finish this little one. So this tiny one has a butt, um, just like a triangular shape, there's a little so there are two petals, one large, one small, maybe just not something like that. You, you see? Okay. Then add little things, because this is secondary. So you don't have to be so complete, just uh, on near the top. Okay. And after it dries, we'll wash with the, the uh, um, soft pink dilute. Diluted color. Okay, now we oriented to the leaves. You can use green if you like. It will, it will be. Um, but I, I'll follow this uh, um, sample using dark. So let's uh, go back to the, the ink brush I saved. Just pure ink. You can add a little water just because it, it, otherwise it. It's kind of uh, too dry. You, you can try you can practice a little bit on the just to see it's too dry. Add some more. Yeah, yeah it just has, has to be a little darker, darker. not necessarily pure ink. So it's a dark, generally darker than the leaf. Right? Also a darker leak uh, lead ink prevented from the uh, Lead. Okay, and just, just like, like painting bamboo or orchid, it's a combination skills. So this, this is very showy of your, your basic training. Um, you can start from the bottom, just goes up, just like how you do the bamboo, or uh, you can do the leaves first. But uh, keep in mind that center of game, uh, whichever is easier. Let me see. I all do the, the, the stem, maybe the, the bottom. Again, I consider this uh, minor uh, entrance point, and entrance point. It just serves to um, connect the two, you know, the flower with the leaf somehow. Okay, so we'll start from the. Uh, It's actually in the middle, but uh, that actually already served as uh, like the starting point of these flowers. Somehow uh, more towards the flowers. And I will just follow this. So it goes, goes up here and uh, pointing to the flowers. So this kind of lead the eye towards the, the flower. Okay. And then uh, it turns left, right, and uh, uh, turns uh, right, sorry, and this is a very thin 
stroke. It, it's you know, could be leaf, could be uh, could be a leaf, could be a stem. Doesn't matter. It's just uh, the direction is important. Okay. It's a very thin line, like a very thin bamboo leaf or grass. Yeah. So this one has a, uh, a, a like a two-stroke uh, for like Ren or Ch uh, Chinese character Ren people. Now this could go. Uh, okay, just diagonal, diagonal line. Okay. And uh, we can introduce another, another branch, another stock that goes like that. And there's not, not just like bamboo. I'm sorry, <laughs> it goes all the way to the. That's good. We call this "bisuo wei dao qi tun," idea complete with absence of stroke already. <laughs> to copy, you can't really copy this kind of strokes, right? Oops, I lost chalk. Let me just do this. Okay. And uh, one long, one short. Don't have to connect them as long as they uh, seek the same food. We call it ji to in, in lotus painting. All the, the lines like a fish head seeking the same food that create uh, uh, the coherence of the root. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions on that? Yes, Henry. Uh, there is a question from uh, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. uh, she asked if it's common to find bamboo growing near lotus. Oh, this, is I don't know. this is not bamboo. It's reeds. It's not bamboo. So that's why I keep it thin, like a grass, if you will. It Thank is you. not bamboo. I'm using bamboo technique, but not bamboo. You understand? Thank you. Yeah, it, it's very long. It's like uh, the reeds, you know, the reeds. Yeah, the right. Water. water plants like the uh, phlegmites, uh, all sorts of water plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, it's a root, 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 or phlegmites. Uh, yeah. Right. I I like cattail. Uh, cattail is different. Um, this is just a uh, yeah. It's a, it's very. Um, and narrow, it's almost like it has this kind of joints. That's why it confuses some people. You know, they think it's a bamboo. So it could paint bamboo, but it will be yeah. They, bamboo could grow, but you know, they don't grow in the water obviously, but it could be near water. So um, and I'm thinking about this line, maybe too straight. I don't know. Just try to break that or just leave it. Maybe just leave it. Okay. And now we're going to sign, uh, to inscribe it. Choose Ying Zhi He Hua Bi Yang Hong. What? Oh, I forgot the, the statement. Yeah, we, we need to wet it dry. Uh, no, it's dry actually. Let's wash it. Okay, I'll use a softer brush. You need to move the paper again to the right, Henry. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do the wash. I use this uh, uh, clean brush. I, I saved it for all my pink flowers. Um, this is a combination brush. It could be a soft brush. 
you can you can use um, water to wet this you know kettle then you you wash it or you can just uh, use very light uh, to start with then you can uh, you know you can just do it in one stroke basically you don't have to do it little by little that's why I you know I don't need to wet I just do like that just one stroke just like as if you paint the bonus style or directed you know three style so you just uh, the bottom of the brush is clean so you see it has the gradation also. That's the easy way. If you do it little by little, you can do wet into wet. Uh, see, the, on the master copy here, there, there is not completely filled. It could be, you know, like two strokes. And you can have some white areas uh, on the edge of uh, between strokes. It's, it's all okay. See, just the freestyle, right? So you, you can leave a little white, which suggests the light, you know, like a highlight, the lit side. Yeah. And uh, some dark on the tip. So you can just chill it like that. Just be free. See? Leave a lot of white. Don't feel every bit of it. You know, I have white in between the strokes in somewhere. That, that gives uh, the painting life. Okay, and here there's a lot of white, not, not necessary to wash at all. Just, you just dot the top, basically, and there may be a little bottom, and just leave the white. That, that creates 3D to make it a pop, yeah. Okay, just to highlight the line, if you want. Okay, and I have to wait this to dry a little bit more to do the polling. Uh, the statement. Okay. We'll Henry, see. I commented about the difference when you dot the lotus stand versus using the nail hatch uh, technique to do the stand for the rose. We are not going to do the nail hat uh, stroke for the stamp on the lotus to make it thorny like the rose, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's different. It's it's hairy, not thorny. Okay. Lotus stem is not thorny. It has a hair, not okay. raw thorns. So okay. to indicate that uh, rough roughness, rough texture, we use tiny dots, rounded dots with no points, no sharp uh, needle points, kind of. So Thank you. It's very, very short, not long at all. You know what I mean by hair, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a rough hair. It's like a just stuff, uh, like a, yeah, like a, you know, a man's uh, uh, <laughs> mustache. <laughs> Must, yeah, it's much shorter, just like a, my, my chin, uh, I sh I didn't shave this morning. That's that's how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Stubby. Okay. Stubby. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. I don't know. If you could uh, search maybe on Google, there there, there must be a, a translation for this line. Okay. So the, the lotus right? flower. The lotus flower under the sun uh, is especially red, something like that. Yeah, I, I think I did, <laughs> The uh, sun uh, makes the color even mm -hmm. redder. Okay, let me let me find that, that translation. I, I put it in the in the handout. Uh, I, I I did copy there. Let me see. Okay, let me just close this, and then we'll see this handout. It has translation there. I cannot read, have to enlarge it. And let me read it for you. Uh, pink lotus blooms take from sunshine a new dye. Pink lotus blooms, a uh, blossom, sorry. Pink lotus blossoms take from sunshine a new dye. That's a. Uh, a translation by uh, a famous uh, professor in Chinese literature. 
Pink lotus blossoms take from sunshine a new dye. Yeah, that's the what this line says. Okay. I think it's by Sudonpo uh, described the West Lake. I, I know some of you have studied in Hangzhou. You probably know Sudonpo, Sudonpo's uh, poet in Northern Song Dynasty. So I'm going to write just one line, I think, along the edge here. And you can over overlap with the just ignore the ink or you can void it, uh, just continue uh, under it. Yeah. Special kind of red. And uh, there's a year and a month uh, uh, for the horse. And we are in the half year of uh, the. Uh, Ox. So I'm going to write Xin So So I don't have to write the months, but don't have room for the months. So just my signature. Okay, and then seal. Put uh, the seal on the side. This is uh, what uh, Master John did. He has uh, the last name John in the seal and, uh, next to the first name, signature. Let's do that. Oh, I need to add the statement. Uh, you can use a small brush with a uh, um, Chinese red, uh, Ch I'm sorry, Chinese white or, or opaque, uh, like a gouache. And it's almost dry up. Okay. And blend with a uh, yellow. You can use uh, oops. It's two nine. We only have one yellow. Two eighteen. Cambodge. Uh, incidentally, I, I keep all my uh, tubes in a plastic. In addition to that, I, I use a tissue uh, with water. So, you know, when I open the tube, there's not only, you know, no problem with dry tube, it makes the paints more uh, fresh. So that's just a tip I learned from uh, other artists too. Of, you know, my, te my uh, student uh, in Hawaii, she told me that. She probably didn't use the tissue, but uh, if you added wet, uh, damp tissue in, in the plastic bag, it would make the paint very easy to squeeze also. Okay, uh, we mix these two to get an opaque, opaque yellow, and then there's a uh, a little bit, there's a little bit red. You can add anything or you even uh, umber. Whatever you got, it's fine. You know, I just add a little, little red here to the tip. And it should be, 
covering the red. So you need to a lot of white, almost a pure color. It's like a, you can hold the brush straight. Like a little um, build up beads, you know, or it's uh, very thick. When you mount it, um, it might you might uh, stick on on the table, a wet mount you know, table. That's okay. You, you can you, you can add back if you need. Okay, so it's always always like that. You use this thick hands to cover, but also some on this side to cover the the red underneath it. So in, you can do it with a group of maybe three. If you just like you know uh, the other flowers. Uh, the peony, right? Yeah. You group them and overlap them. So they're pretty dense. Just like that. Um, usually we don't paint the the seed part. Th that is a little green. Uh, is yeah. Okay. Any any questions? No questions. Okay. That's uh, uh we can do the uh another one with a uh, dragonfly. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should practice a little bit before we do. So there um two two sizes. One is very small. Do we have a space that we can add? Maybe I can add right in the middle here. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'll do this one with the wings on top. Like, a, a you, know, you, you, you should find a spot in your um, composition. So I, I have a spot here. I'm going to do that. All right. I will do the the red the red body eye something like that and then we'll add the wings I think let's see this and there's a space between the body and the, the uh, the shoulder, you might call it, and the, the long body. Right. So uh, sometimes we see the dot, you know, little sections. But in, in uh, this size, we don't need to paint all that. Just leave some space with a, what you call this uh, dotted line, you know, a little bit. So this is pretty fresh. Uh, you can use. You can use, uh, I have a scallop, which is 302. Oh, I have never used it. And you can also use uh, vermilion. Vermilion is uh, 399. There's a painting behind me. Let me show you. I have a red dragonfly with a uh, Can you see the the painting on my left? The scroll. Yeah, there's a dragonfly there. It's the same color with the flower. It, it was done, it was a cinnabar and the remaining. Okay. And we um, I think the color should be different but related to the first color of the flowers. So we just oh that's a good it's a Chinese red or scarlet. Scarlet. Three o two. That's what I can try. Just a prime red. You can use watercolor. Like a, I don't know what is it called Carol red. Is that something warm red? It's kind of warm. So 
and then you you add a little bit carmine maybe to make it a little different and a little root to start with the I see the eye look a little darker maybe with a little blue too anyway it, it might change you know from uh, each painting that uh, teacher John does. So there are two dots combi combined from the, the head with the, you know, the eye. It's pretty, that's the dragon eye. And then you do another dot immediately after that, a little bit of space maybe between the two. So it's, it's a uh, water, like a teardrop, which means you press a little bit, but it was very short, you know. And then another long teardrop yeah, it's a teardrop because the pressure is increasing. So I have to dry the brush. Just make sure it's not going to bleed that much. And notice the the curve. It's not perfectly straight. It's a little down, but uh, yeah, just to, to indicate that kind of feel. I just have a little something like that. I, I have a little dots in the bit in the middle, but it it just happened. I didn't plan it, it's just a hesitation. Sometimes there's a little split tail, but we usually, you know, we don't fuss with that. You can put a little dot there or something. Anyway, that's, um, that's, that's the body, and the, uh, I'm going to add a little more rouge color. You can add a little ink too, just to make it darker. You can use a, a tiny little brush, we have a little Smaller, but this is the small weasel brush we uh, supplied. You can you can dot the eye with a little ink too, and then the antenna is very short. I I didn't realize they have antennas. And uh, three strokes, just one complete, just like a you know mosquito, mosquito legs, mosquito long legs, right? Just like that. Um, was uh, suggested, you know, and you can dot a little bit line just uh, according to the situation, not necessarily for each painting, but uh, okay. Now I, I clean the brush, There's, there could be a little leftover, whatever, you got a little gray. Uh, on this palette, I have uh, all the colors here. I, a, a little leftover, a left, a little leftover indigo, maybe you know some some red, some uh, yellow to get a warm gray. It could be light ink, you know. You don't have to use color at all. So it could be a little more. But this is red. Uh, Red, so warm will be better, I think. If it's, the see the one on the top is, is cool. Um, it's a blue dragonfly, so that's uh, just the gray, straight gray. So notice the angle is almost uh, perpendicular to the, to the body, right? And you just, um, um, let me see. You can do it either way. The, uh, nail head, which is uh, from top down, or uh, teardrop from the uh, bottom up. Maybe you know, do it like a check, and like a down and up. So let's do that. Carefully plan, and then you can practice several times like that to see how how it goes and uh, so straight about the length of the body right about it probably a little longer depends on the the, the uh, perspective so it's about there perpendicular to the body go yeah not so fast you know I, I made up a little actually they're double wings because they um, they fold, they, they're two sides, so I just do a little partial overlapping, you know, 
it also can adjust the length. If it's too short, you can make that line a little taller. If it's too long, you make it shorter. So it really depends. And then I go up with the, the uh, short one. They have two each side, right? Okay, like that. And then I add a little accent to the shoulder part, just the, the bone, you know, add a little straight line. You, you see more clearly on the top, this one, see that little, little line indicates the, the bone part. Just the accent. So that's it. My antenna is a little too <laughs> too long, maybe. Okay. My eye could be a little rounder, so I cannot change that. And then I dot the the eye, the in the front. Kind of change that a little bit. And the close. Can you see clearly? Okay. If it's not um, complete, you can use a uh, little green, gray, or I mean blue, gray to wash a little bit. I want I want it to over so look like the moving or something. It's very hard, huh? This part should be a little larger, I think. Okay, this could be a little longer. Anyway, so when you start to depict it, you lose the the uh, vitality of it. So it's okay, not perfect, but uh, don't um, try to don't try too hard. <laughs> That's the word. Right? Don't try too hard. Let the imagination fill in all the, the details. Okay, that's that's uh, that's it. And let's do a larger butterfly, maybe. Oh man, I'm not butterfly, dragonfly. Okay. Using double shrine again. This is a single shrine. Okay. Single Raw shrine. Yes, just a single. Thank you. Okay. At least I have to choose a pin. Uh, we can do. This is the water lady. You should do lotus. You see if there's any composition you like, maybe in this group. We can pick one with a. We can add a uh, dragonfly easily. So I will pick one of these, or we can just create on our own. Doesn't really have to copy. Any of these? Th this is the vertical one. There's a dragonfly there on the butt. Okay, let me let me just do it uh, without reference. Um, see how it works. Okay. Uh, this is this is really nice. Small penny. But that that's a uh, small butterfly. Let me see. Oh, a small dragonfly. We may we may change that to, into a bigger one. So I'll just do this one, okay? And the smooth side is the front. You can use the finger to feel it or uh, look against the light or some, somehow. 
to to uh, to see which side is the front. If you use the wrong side, it's okay, but uh, you better use the smooth side. It gives a better uh, color coloration, you know, maybe. This paper is a little bigger, so I'm going to use that. I use larger brush. Okay, and I'll just use a uh, little ink. You don't have to use any color, but I I had a little leftover um, indigo and the silo there, so I just take advantage of that. Instead of pure water, I got uh, some color. And uh, this painting is pretty light. It's a tender leaf, it's like new new uh, leaf. So just uh, pretty light. And then a little bit dark on the tip. OK. Because I, I use this brush because uh, I don't have to reload. Yeah. And I see he probably start from this short uh, short leaves, I said strokes. You can also start from the the long one. Yeah, I think whichever comes in convenient, it's, it's okay. And notice the long stroke that goes all the way to this almost this corner. So let's do that. And uh, this one is about uh, one third, a little one third, not too high. To give room for the flowers, okay. It's almost like a flat view. So here we go. You can have a turn back just like that, you know, like a, like a this. Go this way and then goes back, and then goes. Uh, you can reload a little bit, and then you can overlap with the previous one, because this paper create a watermark between each stroke. Blotting paper is very handy. See this smear could be could be stuffed. Let me do it to uh, okay, just make a and uh, just something like that. So each stroke it counts, yeah, because uh, on this paper you cannot completely uh, blend two strokes, combine two strokes without leaving traces. So let's uh, use larger brush. If you use small brush, there will be many uh, watermarks between between them, and you can you can use a different different uh, brush or you just use the same brush but dry it for the stem. Okay, I dry the brush with paper towel. I just use the same brush, same ink and maybe a little bit just left over there. Could be a little darker to start. So this this is the center of the uh, leaf, right? Like that. And they form, um, they radiate from the center, like that. Okay. Uh, you don't have to paint exactly parallel, but this one does uh, pretty much like that. And see, this is split as a characteristic of a. Uh, Lot is veins. This the the split um, into two and then two two something like this, you know something like that. Uh, see the, the but you don't really have to do all the veins. And notice I have very um, less you know contrast, almost same tone. A value as the 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 ground, 
if you have a strong color for the veins, in this case, you will create a destruction of the, the, the mood, kind of fresh, fresh freshness of the, for the leaf. And also, you know, like the, water, the morning kind of feel, um, misty or uh, yeah, fresh kind of. Okay, I just reload a little bit. Dry brush, dry the brush with the paper towel, and then uh, do this vein. Okay. I mean, this stem. Okay, just uh, a little dark. Again, it goes. From from this, yeah, I I'm, I make I, I emphasize this this uh, movement, not just a straight line. You know, it has uh, a tendency to to go the other direction, the the towards the left, but uh, uh, have a tendency to towards the, the right in the end, right. Okay. Because I got blurred, I just add a little bit leaf to hide that. It should be under the leaf, so this is a. Um, it's okay, just a, like you see between the leaf notch or something. Okay. See, so again, this has to do with the position of the flower. You have to estimate the flower is about uh, this high there. Not too high. Yeah. My paper is much larger than the original, so... Okay. And this time I do uh, draw the bottom part. Okay, and you don't have to do it exactly uh, to to uh, fill in that that space. It's better without overlapping. You know, if you if you go over to it, it will create confusion like like here. Um, it's a fine child back. This is, uh, should be in the back, so void. Void the hard cross, definitely. And then I can just use uh, dark ink. It's good to use a large brush to do small strokes. It's very... Uh, this should be done after the flowers, I, I remember. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me let me follow the steps. I just can't wait sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> um, get a light tone again with a uh, a liner. I I just I like to use softer brush because it's more uh, flexible. I can create the Calligraphy is easier. Okay. And this one, uh, we always start from the center, right? The center, center uh, petal. And this one has a combined shape with other uh, petals. It's interesting to create some kind of uh, abstraction, if you will. Okay, here we go. Just, uh, it's a it's a triangular shape. Goes all the way here and go up like that, and then you you do a partial. Uh, you can. It's a kind of thing. I don't have to 
it's, it's sometimes it's I think it should be two pedals, so just the like a double pedals here, and then because my brush is quite dry, so I can go slow, and create this kind of a uh, uh, lost and found effect. But it's, if it's too dry, you might lose the freshness. So it's a, it's a very subtle thing to to. Um, Control the speed and the, you know. Okay, and this could be a stop. That is okay. Okay, not symmetrical, definitely. All right, and you can add more if you, you your shape is not. Uh, Completely balanced, like uh, you know, here I may feel like uh, not enough. I can add, but it would start to once you do that, you would create uh, all kind of uh, uh, consequences. So I'm going to draw this uh, this orchid again. It's not orchid. Okay, orchid doesn't really grow in the water. It might be iris or some kind of. Uh, other plan, wild, um, yeah, doesn't matter. It's, it's this kind of long grass, long blades. Okay, and it has all the turns and the curves. And the point is, you, this is the darkest part of the, the painting, which is uh, these things important, um, you know, not flower, not the leaves, it's grass, right? That, um, I think Victoria talked about uh, um, a common saying in the uh, cycle of uh, those who grow flowers. In the beginning, they grow uh, flowers, and then the grass. In the end, they just play with the uh, rocks. So, you know, a painting, it, you know, the most free part is the grass. It shows your, you know, your talent more than anything else, maybe. But it's not necessarily the focus of the the, uh, the painting. Okay, I'm gonna do the dark on the flower and the uh, same. So you can you can use a smaller brush to dot this uh, pollen or stamen. Just the five or four or five strokes. Just you know vary the the rhythm. The rhythm vary the distance and the size created that and then this thorn not thorn hairs on the on the stain. Notice the stain. If you look at the real body stain they they do like a, can you know it's visible. with this little thorn kind of hair. Okay, so the, the plan was to do the large, large butterfly. We already did this small one, so we're gonna do this, uh, this one. Um, I think there is a red, Right there, let me enlarge it so you can see better. How about this one, the green? You know, I, 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 I do really remember when I tried to catch them in, when I was uh, young. It we call this the green uh, bean, eye. <laughs> green mud bean, and with tiger, tiger stripes on the body. It's beautiful. 
but I think this red we will yeah even this one okay let's just do a flying one so or you can put it on the flower on the I will just do it to here I don't know if this one is correct uh, orientation but certainly this this one okay we can use a small liner it could be a gombi liner which is a, a two step like this or a red hair actually this is a small red hair right yeah red hair brush to draw outlines we can just go a little ink very scarce very dry you can use a, a tower towel to dry the bottom of the brush just use the tip let me enlarge this we can do two if you want just for practice yeah. okay now you can see better my reference here I'm looking I'll just do the red one first here for the beginning. So I draw these two front wings like a V shape. And you can double li line this because there's a hard bone kind of. You don't have to do both sides, maybe just one. And then um, I draw this. Uh, this soft, very subtle side with a like a blade of a fan, you know, like a, this old fashioned fan shape or a helicopter fan, something like that. Okay, and then the rear wings is in a perspective, so this is foreshortened. In the, the shape like that. And this one is, you see that overlap? It suggests this transparency. Okay. This front is always straight and then the curves, there's a curvy, subtle side, lost and found, and then something like that. And then um, just indicate. The, uh, we can do that later, but you know you can indicate it some uh, net kind of uh, texture, the pattern, the pattern of the the wing, and you can see the leg under it. Yeah, right? I'll do that later. Just a suggestion, you know, just just a suggestion to indicate the texture of the Qi Bai Shi, the, the master in, uh, in this, he would do the dragonfly in Gombi style. So every little detail will be portrayed. But we don't have to do that. This is a small uh, Xie Yi or freestyle. So I'll use darker ink to draw this uh, uh, the, the eye just and the mouth uh, oh actually it's uh, it's much there's a neck so I, I lost that and let me just redraw this okay this is the eye there's a space between the wing and the, the body that's the neck and then there's the back that's I just make notes for that. I use a very dry brush, almost like a pencil. I can draw um, with uh, no bleeding. This is a, the red red hair brush. It's a very good for drawing lines like this or Gombi style. You can also use for writing small character signature like. So there's a, a mouth in the front small mouth and then um, I don't think we need to do the 
the uh, sections, you know, with this uh, red. So he, he just used uh, red, this Chinese, Chinese red or the scarlet pure, with some yellow maybe, yeah, with some yellow, some uh, black, okay, and uh, just one stroke. And make, if not enough, just make up another one. Okay. And the lens is about there. And you can you can repeat it again. It's one stroke. Nail head tail end, right? And then you use the same color to dot the front. One, two, three, four. That's Easy. The color of the the eye. Um, sometimes the the red also appeared in the end of the wing. I remember. Oh, yellow. It's a yellow. Okay. Yeah, but that had that has to do with the uh, wet wash. Let me. Let me show you. Um, I, you can always do it, you know, with one stroke. But uh, uh, to make it easy, maybe you, you draw the water on the outer side, the soft, the you know, the soft side of the that just just wet the area, if you basically with clean water, and then uh, use some dirty color. I think and some yellow, some. Uh, to make a little color for orange. I don't know what exactly the color. Just some gray. Gray color. Okay. I think you can you can do it in two steps. One is lighter and then add a little dark darker one. So it's just This look like a little green. Oh, I think. Okay, the idea is to use green in the eye, then left over for the show, for the for the back, and then uh, the wings. I think that should do. So I I'll redo this. So I got uh, the. You can use a little little opaque. Little opaque color, or just use uh, transparent green. It's okay, I think. I got some yellow, some uh, some green there, yes. and just mute it with some uh, blue. Okay. Yeah, that's the color. And uh, some more yellow. Okay. Oh. And uh, I just dot the bottom of the just like that. If I could do it in one stroke, it would be the best. And this is a subtle try to indicate the overlapping so it's a little dark there and dark here but uh, very fine color and then dot a little acid you can have a little red, I believe. Just the, the end of the, the wing. Yeah. 
I would do a little red to the mouth. I don't know if that's that's okay. Oh, the leg, I forgot. It should be done before washing, so, you know, you don't have to worry the smear. So I, I'll use my uh, hair dryer or okay, hair dryer. Not hair dryer, I bought this uh, $10 heat gun, did they call it, from Amazon. So I can spot, it's very quiet. Relatively, so I don't have to mute it myself. Oh, very, very, very hot actually. Okay, and I just draw this like. Oh, draw. After you wash the brush, make sure the handle is also dry, so it will not drip. At this point, you, you want to avoid that kind of mistake, accident, you know. So, just make sure it's dry, so you can go slow, but not too dry. Still, you can draw a line like that, like that. And it's good to have a little moisture to just blur a little bit. Okay. And you can add a little more. I want the fast with with that. Maybe a little bit hair there. All right. And you can enhance the a little bit. So try to indicate the transparency of the wing. Don't over color it, I think. Very translu translucent. Very Could be a little blurry. I realized you didn't really see the result. Okay. Just a little color to hide my not so perfect strokes here. I don't see any dark there. Oh, it could have some highlight. Yeah, in, in the you see the one on the left, there's there's uh, some area it, you can leave a little white, but I, I missed it, that's okay. I I can create some shadow maybe. Make the make the uh, the eye a little bit more rounded if you wish. But don't make it too realistic. It's a, it's not that kind of a style. You could do that with the gombi, you know, like the Chiba should did with a very detailed detailed style. And very bold um, leaves. Okay. Now that's the model I, I changed a little bit. I try to find uh, where to sign. Oh, on this side. Yeah. You can also sign on this side. I think uh, if it's a yeah, short signature, they will, will be fine. And you can put a seal. That's a red. Okay, yeah, on this side, maybe. That's good. The red seal is a part of the uh, composition, just like uh, the red stamp is part of the composition, just like uh, the red 
uh, dragonfly and we just put a, a short date for the year of the ox and the I saw him in the same style as my teacher he, he doesn't write cursive style There's the last word is hua means a painted And you can use a larger seal Oops. to match the size of the signature. If you want, you can do more uh, different color ones, but it will make it too busy, I think. Uh, I'll put a, maybe a later at Studio C or something. So uh, you don't have to, I think. I'll just trim it up because it's too too much. Good. Any comments and questions? Uh, let me see what you're doing. Oh, there's a survey going on, and you can um, respond to that. It will help to eva evaluate the class, and uh, hopefully we'll come back in the near future, two months from now, the soonest. Okay, we have uh, 10 minutes. Let me open comments and uh, critique. You know Can I show you mine? Yeah, okay, it's let me change vegan. this Not great. so we can see <laughs> who's uh, showing the work. Okay, let me. I messed up in the corner. Oops. I, I see a blank. So okay, Chris L, uh, you need to put on your video. I cannot see you. I'm pinning you, but I am not seeing your video. Okay. Oh. It's open. Okay, now we see we see Chris. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this way. Chris, uh, it's on the wrong side. You move to the to your left. Okay. Now we see the leaves. Now we see the flowers. Good. Yeah. I think you use the mulberry paper. It's not perfect for flower painting to use mulberry. Um, no, it, it's it's Shuan. It's not mulberry. Oh, is it Shuan? Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. Semi. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um. Yeah, I like the 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 fl the flower stroke and the other strokes uh, you did uh, with uh, calligraphy, which is uh, very good. Um, the leaves could be a little bit tightened, which means on the bottom part, more concentrated a little. Uh huh. Uh, so yeah, it's not expand that much in the bottom. Uh, that's all. I think the dragonfly looks very alive. Very good. The leg could be a little defined. Yeah. Good. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. It's been well, great, Henry. Thank you so thank much. You. Sharon, your turn. Oh, beautiful. Okay. 
Um, the flower and the, the leaves are perfect. The, the plant, uh, the grass, is a little bit... Uh, um, loose. Lo too loose, somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. The okay. dragonfly looks like a hummingbird. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, the, yeah, maybe the leg, is, I mean, the body is too, too thick. Uh, that should be a small okay. one, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe you can just change that into a hummingbird. Um, okay. nice. Just, this yeah, one. you can change that. Yeah, this one is good. This one, this this one is good. The, the wing could be a little longer, but that's a cute um, style that you, mm -hmm. you got. It's very nice. I like it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cute. Okay, style. Thanks. This one is good. Perfect. The, the black and white. Next person. Okay, we got two. Michelle. Michelle. Okay. Okay. One. <laughs> um, which one I like better, both of them. <laughs> well, which one do you want to critique? Um, maybe a right one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the leaves is, is very much like a bamboo. But, uh, it's okay. You, you know, it could be it's grass like bamboo. The flowers are perfect. The leaves have, uh, is perfect. In composition, your, your right side uh, could be a little field. You can use signature and title if you decide to do that. Otherwise, you have to trim it. Yeah, it's very okay. good. Very, okay, very nice. thank you. Thank you. Well done. Okay, Laurie. Laurie, black and white, oh, very nice, powerful flower. Oh, beautiful. Well, this is, this is Laurie. Oh, okay. Well, this this image is. I, I like the the lighting effect on this. It's just it's very striking. I uh, love the transparency of the, the dragonfly. Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very masterful. Okay, Ben. Okay, Ben. Oh, the, very nice. I like the. Uh, Water controlled yeah. on the leaves and the grass. The flowers are very good. Uh, so, uh, very nice dragonfly. Both of them are good. Um, yeah, this one has two dragonflies, large and small. Yeah, I like the, the grass. Very composed. Very good. Uh, could be a little bit uh, off the center. Maybe you, you trim off the left, I mean the right, a little bit. So it, the line, uh, actually it's not in the dead center. That's look, look okay. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, D, Raisin. Mm -hmm. yeah, very good. Okay. D, Raisin. Uh, the flower is perfect, uh, bamboo. Dragonfly, the, the head part is uh, too... I didn't like it. Yeah, the, the antenna, maybe just, yeah, only that will be good. The leaves are uh, very, very good. It's uh, like a new growth. Uh, could be a little open next time, yeah. The two sides could be uh, not uh, symmetrical. Um, this, this, um, this one. This one is, is good, yeah. This is a perfect uh, composition. The, uh, the dragonfly, uh, the red line is good. Yeah, not, not, not that bad. Um, the leaf could be a little uh, softer, you know, like lighter and then um, just like the contrast uh, to, create, to contrast with the dark grass. Yeah. Yeah. Are the stalks too thick? The stalk is fine. They, they, they look okay. like that. You could have a larger petal to balance that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The grass is perfect. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed the class very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cassia. Catherine. 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 Okay. Very good uh, tonality. The, the stem on the leaf could be a little stronger. You can make up a little bit. And uh, the dragonfly, the body is uh, missed, right? It doubled. Anyway, oh, it, there's a leaf, right? Maybe you can cover that with a leaf. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. This one's good. The, the dragonfly is a little too too large. Yeah. Yeah. Just a smaller. Okay. The petals of the the flower could be varied a little bit large and the small. You know, the the outer one could be larger, much larger. Yeah. This is the, the center one. So it could be a little more uh, concentrated in the center and then uh, opened in the uh, outer part. The, the okay. shape of the flower. It's not like perfectly like a bow. It, it's a bow shape. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rwanda? Your and uh, your your ink paintings very nice. I like the flowers and the the quality of line for the stems perfect, and uh, the center of the the leaf could be a little defined. Okay, um, the center could, of the yeah. leaf is more veins. You mean like? Um, I think you do have. You can circle that, and then you know you kind of read it. it the center it usually is more defined, but it's okay. You have the, the you have you have that structure. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. I I did this on. Um, I ran out of paper, so I did this on watercolor paper. Oh, you can do that. Too. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. You can have some. Uh, Water before you, you know, like a, uh, dampen the, the paper, get softness. That is good. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Henry. I loved nice. your class. Thank you. It was wonderful. Very good. Okay, Dorothy. Dorothy, oh. your turn. There's one. Okay, beautiful leaves. I love that. Uh, see how tall. Uh, how how bold you know the the top and then uh, contrast with the the bottom light and then mm -hmm. so everything's good the the dragonfly could be a little uh, more careful next time so the, <laughs> yeah it's uh, more like butterfly you know and yeah oh. the wings has to be very subtle very subtle yeah. You, you, yes, you have, thank you. Do you have a smaller brush, like a pointed brush? You can get. I the, have. Yeah. yeah, I did another use a, brush. Use a point, right very sharp brush, and then use dry, dry uh, brush to draw. Uh, you might start with a sketch, you know, under mm -hmm. uh, under the paper somehow. You can shape okay. it. Yeah, just to do better drawing next time. Yeah. Okay. Your your flower is perfect. The detail thank on the. You. On the insects, it's supposed to take one hour. I know you don't have time today <laughs> to, to, to do the details. Yeah. Um, Stephanie, next. Stephanie, great. You have a, st a stand for this, so we don't. It's very good uh, presentation. Thank you. The center of the paper is the flower. It's like um, you know, very very um, um, secret feel, like a. Um, yeah. Very good. So you have the different shapes of the colors of the leaf. Um, yeah, the, it's more like pattern. But next time, try to compose the painting more like a fine art. You know what, what I mean? Is uh, with uh, some kind of movement uh, in, in one direction to the other, yeah. diagonal, not uh, uh, just uh, spread out the designs like a uh, uh, fabric design. You know, um, that will improve the composition part. And the, 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 the stems, I mean, the reeds could be um, less important than, than, the, than you did in the composition. So you could, could have larger, leaf, more dominant leaves. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a supporting role. So don't don't uh, over, overdo that. Dragonfly could be improved. It, the body is a little too fat, maybe. The back <laughs> of the dragonfly uh, connect the wings, uh, just like shoulder part. And then the, the the tail part is long, so you you make that two sections different, okay, mm -hmm. different shape. Oh my God! Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next to person. Thank you. Very very good uh, thorns on the uh, uh, hair on the on the sand. I like that. Thank you. Wow. This Susan Mink. Yeah. Um, I forgot your first name. It's a uh, Mary, right? Suzanne. 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 Oh, Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, th th this thing is uh, this perfect uh, tonality. I, uh, lo I love the, f the leaves, the, uh, the flowers, yeah, and the grass, everything looks fine. The, the grass could be a little um, extended to the bottom, it may overlap with the stem. Okay. And you have a very nice black dragonfly. Uh, the wings could be a little longer next time. Okay. But the tones are correct. The stroke looks fine. Yeah. It, 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 it's just different butterfly. I, I mean, different dragonfly. It looks like a little uh, butterfly wing. Yeah. The wing, uh, maybe one side could be long. Uh, the front wing could be long, longer mm -hmm. than the other. Okay. Also, <laughs> proportionally with Thank the you. body. Okay, the next person, thank you, Suzanne. Yolanda? Okay, your, your watercolor painting, I like the color contrast, the green and the pink. Um, yeah, you have a very good uh, composition. The flowers, very nice. The leaves, it's I like my... the wave kind of shape and I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Is my dragonfly? Yeah, dragonfly okay. could be a little detailed, more detailed um, with a small brush, uh, but doesn't look too bad at all. I, I, so I, nice. I, yeah, you got the impression of that. Thank I, you I like very it. much, Henry. I yeah. enjoyed your class. It was amazing. And thank you, Young Lee. Thank you. Oh, Yongli, do you have to leave for a meeting soon? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, so we could have maybe one or two minutes. Okay, let's just do one more. Um, wow, you even copied the, the signature of the master. Look authentic. <laughs> That's the way to copy. Yeah, you copy everything, including the calligraphy. Looks great. That's yeah, beautiful. Looks great. Except I made a mistake right there. Oh, I see. Yeah. Always do it. I hate it. And this was the other one. Uh -huh. But I also got some red on it by mistake. Oh, yeah, that's okay. It's the sun, you know, as, in the, we, as we mentioned in the poetry. Yeah, that, that, I think I like it. It, does, it looks like a, a happy accent. I, I see a, a sunny, uh, sunny in the sky. I was going to turn it into a, um, just, a just, dragonfly. No, 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 just leave it as it is. It, it looks like a, a sun in the sky. Oh, yeah. A red sun. A red sun. Yeah, you can make it a little circle, uh, maybe half circle or something. I, I think you already have a, re a circle there. Yeah, I think um, the pen is perfect uh, as it is. You know, you don't have to interpret it. Let's just let the, your, the, your audience interpret it. And you no. can decide later. The dragonfly wing is a little too solid, could be more delicate. More delicate. Yeah, use a tiny little brush to do it. Great. Yeah. So, but anything else, uh, everything else is good. Thank you. Yeah, your, Thank your, your you very much for the glasses, loving it. Thank you. Your grass is very masterful, better than mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, um, everybody. I, I think that's all for this uh, class. If you want to, to continue, I have a landscape class um, next uh, Thursday to re resume. There are six. Uh, you can jump into that class, or you can join my online um, regular class, which runs all year round with pre-recorded uh, classes. And uh, I hope to see you soon in the summer. Yeah. Thank you, Yonle. Thank, thank Ali. Thank everyone. Thank, thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Harry. Henry for all I want to time. say, yeah. I want thank to say you, something. Henry. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Yonle. Thank, thank you, you for very you know for you. hosting, teaching such a wonderful class. Um, we all learned a lot, and everybody enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I really appreciate you know Yonle and then doing so much good for this class and put a lot of the resources for the for you know for the pay, for the students and harry harry lee you know did a wonderful job and gave us so much you know, the the time and the, so patient to teach us um thank you thank you so much thank and you, uh, hope it, yeah, have, hope that I, yeah hopefully in the future 
and you will continue teaching mm -hmm. the, the you know this kind of class and all of the students can participate thank okay. you you love pedigot it's great thank you thank you you are one of students keep painting thank you thank you bye thank you so much Okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Goodbye. Bye bye. Hey, bye. 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 Everybody stay happy and have a wonderful summer. Everybody. Yes, have a great summer, everyone. Yeah, everybody have a great summer. Yes. Yeah. God bless you safe. all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice you. Hurry. Hey, you wait a moment. Oh, okay. I'm gonna.